uh, you know what I need to do? I need to relax my shoulders. I realize every time I do a sit down video, I do this when I'm talking. I'm like, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys. And every time I edit the footage, I'm like, what is this? What am I doing? So relax, relax your shoulders. Also, <laughs> Tell me why I was so excited to get this passport stamp, guys. This is my first passport stamp since COVID happened because I never really left China after that. But anyways, uh, if you are looking for information on how to travel from mainland China to Macau and back to China again without having to quarantine, do watch this video till the end i'll be sharing with you all the paperwork and information you need in order to successfully get yourself to macau i'll also share some travel tips and other things like handling your money there and uh, your bank cards your cell phone carrier so yeah you need to watch this video if you're planning to go to macau guys uh, welcome back to my youtube channel my name is andy and in this channel i do travel and lifestyle content if you are new around here or if you happen to stumble across my channel please please hit the subscribe button stay you will not regret it thank you so much to my returning subscribers love you guys love you loads as you can see from the title of the video, this is a travel related vlog. I'm super excited to be bringing back some travel content to the channel. I know it's been forever guys, it's been forever. And that's because I didn't do any traveling over the summer. So my previous videos have been all lifestyle vlogs and that's been great. But travel, travel that's the thing, travel is my first love so super excited and without any further ado let's get into this video so you're ready to make your trip where should you start the first starting point I would advise you to look at is which nationalities require a Macau visa now this might not be clear um, but your Chinese visa does not grant you entry into Macau so even though Macau is a special administration zone of China similar to Hong Kong they do have their own uh, travel restrictions and other travel laws so you have to check and see if your country is eligible to get into uh, Macau without requiring a visa um, I do know that a lot of African countries do need to apply for a Macau visa I know um, but also other countries like Pakistan Bangladesh Sri Lanka I believe they also need uh, an additional visa like they need a Macau visa the second thing to look into are travel restrictions and regulations in your city as well as in your province if you live in China you know that nothing is ever consistent so what might be allowed in Guangdong province might be different from Beijing and other provinces so make sure that when you return from Macau you will not be quarantined third thing to consider is getting to Macau so as far as I know and I do stand to be corrected there are no flights from mainland China to Macau in order to access Macau from mainland you have to go via Guangdong and there are a couple of options the first one is Zuhai and I think this is probably the most popular one because there's the long bridge that connects Zuhai, Hong Kong and Macau so a lot of people from mainland China use that route um, there's also Shenzhen um, from Shenzhen you can take the ferry uh, it is near Sheku port in Sheku and then the other port of entry is in Guangzhou the next thing I'm going to talk about is the paperwork that you need to prepare to get to Macau the first one is your passport duh <laughs> you actually need to have a valid Chinese visa so that you can get back into mainland the second thing that you need to prepare is the Macau health code and you can easily access this by going to the App Store and if you have an Android 
uh, you can go to Google Play, I guess. Um, so you simply search Macau Health Code. Um, it's going to pop up, it's green and white. Um, I believe the default language is English. Uh, if it's not in English, then um, I think there is an option to change the language to English. Um, so you'll go ahead and fill that form out. I'll try to put up my uh, Macau Health Code somewhere on the screen, um, but mine will already be filled out because I went already. So this form is more so a health declaration form. And I think some of the key uh, parts of the form is uh, where you're going to be residing in Macau. So you can go ahead and type in the name of your hotel. Um, and then also you need a contact person who is in mainland China. And then uh, what else? I think I'm forgetting something I'm not sure but um, go ahead you'll go ahead and fill out that form once you've filled it out at the bottom you'll see some options of where to submit and you want to select the submit to border okay so once you click that you should get like a green QR code and it will also say like uh, think like entry granted into Macau or permitted something like that uh, that QR code is going to be your Macau health code so if you get to your hotel you need to check in you show that code if you're going out to restaurants and they need to see a health code that's the code that you're going to show during your stay in Macau the third thing that you need to prepare is you need to sync your GHC code to uh, the Macau code um, so GHC is just just simply the Guangdong health code I'm gonna go ahead and put a picture of how that looks like and I believe for the longest time this health code was not working for foreigners I think now they have like somehow fixed it because it's been working for me for a couple of months I'm gonna screen record and put the steps somewhere on the screen um, so once you have that opened you have to click uh, on one of the buttons uh, once you click there you basically are going to choose Guangdong to Macau right so it's like requesting permission to cross over and then um, it'll give you a green QR code that looks like something that will be up here on the screen this health code you are going to use at the port of entry so once you are scanning your ticket and crossing over to Macau this is the code that they will uh, scan so another thing to also note is that once you sync this GHC code to the Macau health code uh, if you do take COVID tests in Macau you're able to see those uh, COVID results in your GHC code once you have all of that done you're set and you're ready to go that's it it's so simple Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you cannot fly from mainland China to Macau. Uh, the most common way of getting to Macau is via Guangdong province. So I'll go ahead and share my experience, which is taking the ferry from uh, Shenzhen in Sheko and uh, crossing over. The ferry is near uh, Sheko Port Station. Uh, even though there's a nearby subway station, I definitely would not recommend walking from the station to the ferry. And this is because there's a lot of construction going on uh, in this area. And I'm saying in this area because I actually live a five minute drive away from the ferry. So I'm kind of familiar with the area. Um, and you don't want to be walking that route with luggage. There's a lot going on. Uh, there's trucks, the roads are dusty. So yeah, definitely take a DD. In the DD app, you can type Sheko passenger terminal i think yeah um, i'm gonna go ahead and put a screenshot of what you need to type but this is the location where the ferry is um, the dd drops you right in front of the station so getting into the station uh, you will need to show your 24 hour health code and then once you're in you want to go to the second floor so you can either take the elevator or the escalators but once you get to the second floor um, you do have an option to buy your own ticket uh, there are machines a self-service machine uh, it does work with the passport and that's what we did we bought our own tickets um, the ticket costs 290 why I believe 
that is a one-way ticket by the way and then once you have your ticket uh, you can simply like hang around um, there are a bunch of stores you can grab some snacks you can have coffee and just keep in mind that boarding for the ferry starts 30 minutes before departure time um, so we went ahead uh, scanned our codes scanned our passports and we crossed over um, the really nice thing too about taking the ferry is that there are people everywhere outside on the docks inside the station there's people to tell you where you need to go and so once you've scanned your ticket and your passport and you've gone through customs so it's like leaving China you actually have to go through customs so once you've gone through customs you would go ahead and you board your ferry uh, the ferry ride is about an hour uh, it's very nice the ferry is clean they also have refreshments inside uh, pretty smooth ride uh, and then once you get into Macau you have to go through customs again in Macau now and they stamp your passport they do give you uh, a white small piece of paper and this piece of paper you have to keep safe because you cannot check into your hotel without that piece of paper um, I don't have it because my hotel took it <laughs> I was going to show you how it looks like maybe if I find it on Google I'll post it up if not um, just ask when you go through customs which paper are you going to need to check into your hotel another thing that we did once we arrived on the Macau side is we got tested um, upon arrival so this is not something that's optional it's just going to happen uh, you arrive there and you have to take a COVID test um, the good thing is that the test they take at the station is valid for seven days and that is because in Macau right now they're only testing once a week however if you're going to be coming back to Guangdong especially Shenzhen um, I would suggest that you test maybe every other day or every day um, for me I tested every day while I was in uh, Macau once you get to your hotel you do need to ask them where uh, the testing stations are and what I noticed was that all the major hotels had the testing happening on site like in the hotels uh, which was pretty convenient so you can get tested and then you know go about and explore and do everything that you need to do um, if you are also struggling to sync your GHC and the Macau health code and you cannot see the results of the COVID test that you took in Macau you can actually ask the hotels to print out the COVID results for you so that when you come back to Guangdong you have those results in case they check um, while you're in Macau you will notice that um, a lot of people are still wearing masks uh, some indoor spaces will require you to have your mask on so it wouldn't be a bad idea to grab a pack of masks with you now moving on to other travel tips the first tip I'm going to share with you is your cell phone carrier the cell phone carriers that we use are only set up to work in mainland China so once you leave mainland uh, and get to Macau you will not have any signal on your phone granted there is Wi-Fi some public areas and obviously your hotel will have Wi-Fi but if you for some reason wanted to have signal while you're out in Macau you do have to notify your cell phone carrier and in my case I use China Unicom and so what I did was I went to their offices there's an office not too far from my house and I told them that I'd be traveling to Macau between these dates and that they should activate my roaming and so um, once I got to Macau obviously I turned on the roaming um, I did have signal however it wasn't strong signal it was very spotty even though the signal was like spotty and it wasn't reliable but it was kind of nice to have that um, especially when we were trying to navigate uh, moving from one location to the other so something to look into if you want signal in Macau the next thing I'm going to share with you has to do with money and currency a lot of people are going to tell you that there is WeChat and Alipay in Macau and that is absolutely true however as a foreigner you will not be able to use WeChat or Alipay to make any type of transactions because it requires you to have a Chinese ID 
and this will be the same issue if you take your union pay card uh, you will not be able to withdraw any money from uh, an ATM in Macau because it will again require you to have a Chinese ID even though you cannot uh, withdraw money from an ATM with your union uh, pay card uh, you can actually swipe at some restaurants and some hotels if you just swipe your card it will go through so you can bring your union pay card and if you have a visa card like a non Chinese card um, that actually will work the best also uh, bringing a visa card especially if you have a credit card is going to be beneficial for you when you have to uh, pay the deposit for the hotel so you know how it is here in mainland China you can actually uh, pay the deposit uh, from your WeChat or from your Alipay but outside of China places actually use a credit card a visa credit card and I had completely forgotten about that so I didn't bring a visa card and what my hotel ended up doing was they just removed uh, my mini bar which was ghetto <laughs> and then uh, I had to pay everything as I go um, so I couldn't charge anything to the room it wasn't a train smash but um, that's just something to keep in mind so the ways to go about with this issue is to take cash with you um, I personally took about maybe 2,000 kwai in cash um, I did not use the whole amount of course um, but I just wanted to make sure I had enough money with me so taxi drivers and small stores will take uh, the RNB as it is like you don't need to convert that money um, however something to note is that uh, when you exchange the two currencies Macau uses uh, the Macau dollar they call it the MOP so the current rate is I believe like one Chinese RMB is about one point maybe one eight or one three Macau dollar so every time you pay with the Kwai they just take it as one to one so you might lose maybe 13 cents or 18 cents so something to keep in mind so you will be losing a little bit of money but uh, for the convenience honestly like I didn't mind so another tip I want to share with you guys is moving around Macau something to note is there are no car ride sharing platforms in Macau so there is no uber no DD no Lyft and this is actually a change since COVID happened because I remember when I went to Macau pre-COVID um, there was Uber but um, speaking to some of the local people they did say that um, there was a whole situation with taxi drivers and uh, Uber and ultimately they decided to chase Uber out of Macau so if you are trying to get around you will heavily rely on taxis there are local buses but um, we didn't even bother with them because Macau is very small so even if you take a taxi um, you, you aren't expected to pay like large amounts of money to move around and there's pretty much taxis everywhere they're quite easy to hail I mean you just lift up your hand you know how it is just hail a taxi um, so that's it guys um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything um, if I am I will just add a voiceover <laughs> and add whatever I forgot um, but I do hope that you found this video informative if you do use this video and you make it out to Macau please come back to this vlog leave me a comment I would really appreciate that I love reading your comments and I know that uh, this video was not relatable to some of my subbies who are not in mainland China and I do apologize for that I did feel like I needed to shoot this video to give the information so that people wouldn't ask that in the comment section once I start posting the vlogs um, so anyone who finds this helpful I hope I have answered all your questions I do promise the next video is going to be the Macau vlogs and you'll get to see what I got up to so I'm looking forward to share some of that content and that's it for this video um, so please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one bye